Um, yeah, so I'm Rebecca. I'm the Digital Experience Coordinator at West Vancouver Memorial Library. Um, and our digital lab space is called The Lab. We like to keep it simple. Um, we opened our lab in March of 2018 with funding from our foundation. So in 2016, the library conducted a community technology consultation through which we identified the creation of uh, a lab as a priority for us. Um, so with the opening of the lab, we went from teaching a few classes a month in our old computer training room, which we've now converted into a um, bike storage area for staff, which I'm personally <laughs> very happy about. <laughs> um, so we went from teaching a few classes a month to now on average one to three classes a day. So it's been a, a really big increase for us. Um, and we do classes for both adults and youth, um, a fairly even split. Uh, we finalize our youth programming first since there are more parameters around when youth classes can be offered. So um, weekday afternoons, weekends, uh, spring break, and summer is definitely dominated by kids programming. Um, and then we schedule the adult classes around that. And we always ensure that we have our program calendars finalized three months in advance to meet our communication deadlines. Um, and we aim to offer all of our classes at least once within a three month cycle. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility in there. So, for example, um, come January, we might offer more sessions of how to quit Facebook. Um, if people are feeling more social in March, then we'll uh, start offering getting started with Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just as an example of one of our youth programs, I have pictured here our um, Spiro Chariot Races class. Um, oops, sorry, I just dropped something else. Yeah. Um, so in this class, uh, kids get to partner and do some hands-on tactile work with making the chariots, uh, and then they do coding to program the spheres to race on the track. Um, so for us, I'd say our youth programming is, uh, is pretty unique. The digital experience team partners with the youth department in order to um, develop and deliver these programs. Um, so we can really marry the tech expertise of the digital experience team with the youth staff's knowledge of developmental ages and stages. Um, and it's been really great from um, both a staff cross-training perspective and, and in terms of the quality of the programming that we offer. Um, so kids come into the programs at all different levels um, and abilities and aptitudes depending on access to technology at home and school, and um, for us it's been a really valuable opportunity for um, facilitators to match kids at different levels, so um, we have to pair kids who are um, at different levels so they can teach each other, and then kids really get the opportunity to be experts themselves. Um, so we view in our youth programs the staff not so much as a teacher, as a, but more as a facilitator, um, and really put the child at the center of learning. Um, and the library is also the only place in the community where families can come to learn together. Um, so we offer a lot of family programs where uh, it's a really unique chance to bring together kids of different ages uh, to learn with their adult caregivers. Um, and I think another unique thing about our lab is um, we have the opportunity to really grow with our community because we're a single branch in a relatively small library. Um, we really have a lot of flexibility in being able to develop and offer more in-depth classes. So for example, we've been offering a digitization drop-in session every week since the lab opened. Um, and lately we've noticed the numbers for those sessions dropping for a few reasons. I think because we've been regularly offering this programming, our community um, is really familiar with how to use these, or a lot of our community is really familiar with how to use these tools now. Um, and they also have the opportunity to use those tools um, in library by booking our multimedia studio space. Um, and we have a lot more of those tools as part of our circulating technology as well. Um, so in planning three months out for September onwards, we're shifting to offering just one or two of these drop-ins a month. And with the other time slots, we're developing and delivering more in-depth coding classes because the community demand has really been so high. So, Last month we launched a new program with Python series, and then this month we launched a new Learn to Code website series. Um, and the wait list has been longer than the capacity for both of those classes, which is really exciting because we weren't sure how it was going to go. <laughs> um, 
Um, and so we're really going to focus on that project in the fall and uh, develop another new understanding web hosting and structure series as well. Um, but at the same time, we also had a huge wait list still for our iPad Essentials series. So um, we're always going to really um, ensure that we're offering classes at all different levels and for all different ages um, so that we have something for everyone. Um, while also shifting things based on technology changing all the time and community needs as well. So um, yeah, that was a pretty.